And finally, last but not least, uh, it's my greatest pleasure to introduce Rob Howard. Uh, Rob is the owner of Online Language Center, partner at, at Business Language Training Institute, and founder of EFL Talk. He's a speaker worldwide on teacher development, continuing professional development, student retention, and image presentation. He's joint coordinator of the ITEFL BSIC online team, online and video coordinator and video interviewer for the Visual Arts Circle, president of the Brest TESOL BSIC, as well as co-founder with Dorothy Zemark of the Independent Authors and Publishers Group. He has authored and co-authored several books for EFL. He was nominated for the 2016 British Council's Ilton Award for Innovation in Teacher Development. Over to you, Rob. Well, thank you. Hear me okay? So, uh, good. Okay. Before we get started, just a quick thank you, Erin. I'll push your book again. It's a great book. I highly recommend it. And two other great books that I happen to have here from our last speaker, Magdalena. And something I'm very proud to show, her great artwork of me. Okay. So, great. Um, We'll put in, um, Karen, if you can throw in, again, the Visual Arts Circle and also the Image Conference. Um, I hope we see you guys in Athens. And Heike, I want to thank you for putting this together for us and giving us the opportunity. Um, I'd love to thank everybody here who has spoken so far. And this was wonderful. And we really want to show off the visual arts circle. We're very proud of some of the things we've been doing. And go to our site, follow us on Facebook, please, and join us. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about present perfectly. And it's thinking about the image on the screen. A lot of people have been talking about the imaging. And what I'd like to talk about this is, if you were here the other day, and I know, Shell, when you were here, you saw my workshop that I did on screen gymming. You'll see a few of the same slides, because this was an offshoot of this, but we're going to go quickly now. Um, just as my disclaimer, I always give this. I did this with PowerPoint and Paint, so you don't need to have fancy programs to do anything to produce good images for the classroom. Thanks, Kieran. And this is me um, in an image because I'm very visual too. And these are all the things that I do and things that I'm involved in. Now, this is very complicated. There's a lot of things here. And when you take a look at this, what do you think? It might be easier if we use words to represent this? No, it's just as confusing. So. There's a lot of information, and this is the point that I want to make. Think back. In the old days when we used to learn math, you know, you guys are young, but I'm old. Learning math, we used flashcards. Teacher held up a single flashcard, and we figured out, yeah, 2 times 7 is 14. But now we have technology, and we've been overusing technology, and it's the same as throwing all this in front of the student at the same time. Would we have learned math had we thrown all these flashcards up at the same time? But we're doing this with the images that we're using in the class. Now, think back. You know, lazy teachers, we only wrote one thing on the board because we didn't want to erase and deal with the messy chalk. You know, now we have technology and we can do everything and we fill up the entire screen. There's too much visual. Uh, back in the old days, this was an election. TV was simple. You saw the actual image. Now you get so many pop-ups on TV. Uh, 
you can't even see the original program anymore. Remember back when this was Messenger? Postcards. Remember when this was our search engine? Here's what we're bombarded with and our students even worse than we are because we shut off to a lot of the technology. But you take your average student that's under 20 and going even younger and they are constantly bombarded with pop-ups, with images, and everything else. And what it's caused is sensory overload. What happens is too much information comes in and the brain just reaches a point and explodes. You know, but what it means in the classroom is we have a perceptive limit. You all probably remember this feeling when you just get so tired that you can't take anything else in anymore. And we are causing this in the classroom because of too much information on the screen. Students shut off. They're then easily distracted. They can't focus in on their tasks. And surprisingly, when you're dealing with older students, because there's so much information, they get this overload. They don't know what to do with it, and they have trouble with social interactions. But the end result is, you know, difficulty in concentrating, and that results in zero learning. And that's certainly not what we're after when we're teaching. So we've caused this kind of where's Waldo of learning, because you can't find what it is that you're trying to focus in on. Well, this is one of my ideas with working with images and rethinking what we're putting on the screen is simplification. Learning is right here. A simple image with just a few simple words and not overloading the screen with information because students are getting bombarded. It takes the average person three seconds to make a decision when they see something, whether it's important to them. So in three seconds, we've either shut off or taken it in. Now, here's a great thing, you know, and this is something with presentations, and I see this all the time when people speak. And what they do is, you know, first they want to tell you what they're going to do. Then they're going to tell you what they're telling you. Then they tell you what they told you. Then you ask questions on what you've already told. And then you answer the question on what you've already said three times. Now, the repetition was important for us when we were there. And what's happening now is today's learner doesn't care. They don't want to be told what they're going to be told. Just tell them. Because they react to this. And, you know, the long quotations and things, and I've always had people read the screen when I had to put a lot of information up. I don't even do that anymore because students do not focus in and their mind is everywhere. Now, if nothing else, I want you to remember this. Text plus talk equals zero. And what I mean by this is if the text on the screen or the lack of image and what you're saying don't match up perfectly the learning is going to be suffering because of that. Now, I can go through, I've studied neuro language coaching. I can tell you all about short term memory consolidation to long term. I don't need to. It's not happening. And in new studies that I've done, it's, it was called Achilles' Ear, it was a great article that when it comes to accuracy and retention from students, the eyes have it. We are much more of a visual society and visual learners than we are auditory. We take much more in. So how do we take advantage of that? Let me make a point here. And um, you guys have saw this before. Don't say what the answers are. Okay, I'm going to go fast, so pay attention. All right. What did you see? You can type in the chat room. 
and don't say a question mark. I said, what did you see? <laughs> oh, good. You're too fast. Great. Okay, let me show you again. All right. Now, usually what happens is, I'm going to go fast. It's late at night. Usually what happens is, when I do this, people get the animal, but they miss the adjective. And by putting the image, I actually have more information on the screen than just the words. You actually catch the words because I used a meaningful picture with a meaningful adjective. And this is the whole idea that I'm talking about. Try and get these two to tie together. And I feel that you should go with a single message per slide. We have to limit the amount of information that's on the screen so students get this consolidation. Now, I used to teach about 300 lawyers in Rio, so we looked through all the law books throughout all the countries in the world, and there is no law saying that you're limited to how many PowerPoint slides you can use. So go ahead and use more. Okay, as we increase simplicity, we also increase effectiveness. And think about how we teach. You know, when we're teaching an essay, we can't teach the title, the intro, the first, second argument, and conclusion all at the same time. So why do we put this all at the same time? What I do is we break it down, we teach the first argument, and then what we do is we bring it together to show how all the pieces fit together. Now, I just did that with representing just three slides. Much better than just showing this slide and getting people confused. So while we're talking about the first argument, they're thinking about the conclusion or the title. So having what's on the screen match the information that we're talking about. Simplification. What happens is you'll find yourself using more slides, but as the slide count goes up, so does engagement. And I remember when I did the very first version of this at the image conference in Malta, um, I had always noticed, you know, when giving presentations, you know, people are checking Facebook and their emails and everything else, but I used so many slides, nobody looked down at their cell phone at all because what oh thanks dear and what happened is is you're so focused on the screen because everything's going so quickly so you're getting more engagement with more engagement you're getting better attention with more attention the student has better comprehension and with that retention and accuracy and recalling the information become better so the idea is to use impact, and you want the visual and the word and what you're saying to all impact. So whatever they do, if they're auditory, if they're visual, however they choose to remember, they will get the message. Now, one thing, this is a study done out of MIT, which is relatively new. I always did my slides with landscapes. I took my own landscape pictures and with objects because I don't take pictures of people usually. And what they found, though, is the most effective images to use on the screen are people. And next, familiar scenes like, you know, the schoolroom, a bedroom, a kitchen, dining room, next objects, and the last landscapes. The reason for this is because we do better when we can relate to the image. So seeing another person on the screen helps us relate better, and uh, it's a better choice to use for your background slides. Now, I'm going to give you some examples of 
things that we do wrong. Um, this, I actually think this was the talk in Malta. It might have been the person that followed me. Um, ah, thank you, Maha. And, uh, you know, too much information, and she went through and read it. And just when we thought that, okay, she's done with that slide, it got worse. And this went on and on and on. And, you know, we see this a lot of times with presentations, just too much on the screen. Now, sometimes there's too little. It's think about how we're presenting. This was uh, here in Gdansk last year, where you've got this whole huge screen and you're using just a small part of it. You know, think about how you're showing to the audience. And then sometimes here we are trying to show test results and this was only up for about a minute. Too much information and the students can't take it in. Um, this was something out of Brazil from one of the publishers. Look at that. And nobody could read it. It's out of focus here, but you look at the size of the letters to the person's hand. Nobody could read anything on the screen. So what was the sense of that being there? Um, then even better, thankfully, they put a nice big square around it. So you still couldn't read any information from even close up. And remember, so text plus talk equals zero. Now, this is what we see all the time. They say, oh, well, that didn't show up well enough, so I'm going to make it bold. I'm going to make it red. I'm going to underline it. I'll use an impact font. I'll put animation. I'll do everything else and then put a cute little kitten. It doesn't work. It's overloading. Um, when you're doing this, you know, when you're doing C, uh, these slides, make the slides easy to read so stick with the basic standard fonts because what happens is you get complicated with some of these things and they're very hard to read and um and, and if i add some color does that make it easier to read no so think about your color choice and your font choice make it clear make it easy for people to understand what's on the screen because the font itself could be giving off a message, like it is here. Okay. Also, um, sizing is important. Remember, when we make up these PowerPoint things, uh, we sit there and we're close to the computer. I'm right in front of the computer. So, of course, I can read the first line that's 12. And... I actually don't like the 10, 20, 30 rule. Um, I disagree with it because his slide count is too low, his word count is too high, and the font is too small. Other than that, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but uh, let's see. You know, look at the sizes that you're using and think of where you're presenting and what kind of room that you're in. Because we're also making the letters and everything too small. Now, another thing with PowerPoint is the basic, um, the basic setup with PowerPoint. By default, the header is larger than the point. So actually, you know, which is more important? Is it the point you're trying to make or the header? So you should reverse these in size. Because this is the important information, is the point. Okay? Also, you have to think about the room size that you're in. I see this an awful lot, even in the classroom. You make the information too small, and people in the room can't read it. You know, and think about standard rooms. You know, we play around with seating arrangements, and we know that, you know, you shouldn't stack all behind each other. But you go into some classrooms, and that's how it has to be. So what about the people in the back? Can they see? And this is a font size of 28 now showing on the screen. But if I use this in a room, you know, it seems great up close. But in a room, it's too small. I can actually get 10 lines of information by going with a font size of 48. So I really recommend that you up your font sizes and use less words. 
Also, viewing is important. Um, here we have in uh, Hungary, this is fortunately, I was behind Hugh Deller. Here's his head in front of me. But the screen was lifted up high. Where, unfortunately, here in Brazil, Luis Otavio Barros did a great one, but I couldn't read what was on the bottom of the screen. Okay? Also keep in mind that the screen size, whether you're going to use uh, for the ratio, the aspect ratio, it can change what you produce. So you could either squish the picture if you have the wrong match, or it can extend it and make me look even fatter than I actually am. It's my excuse. Uh, the other thing, too, is make sure you know how to use PowerPoint. Uh, this was done in Brazil last year. Somebody actually did the entire presentation in the setup mode. And uh, this one here, I don't have the videos, but I don't know if you can see. No, you can't see my cursor moving. Um, it doesn't matter. The idea of this is if you're using a laser pointer at all, don't wiggle it back and forth like this. Just point at what it is you're trying to do. You're not playing a game of Pong. Because that's distracting and people will miss the message all the time. And I see this almost every presentation with a laser pointer. The other thing is I love it when I go to these things and they say, oh, and you can get all the information with just the, um, with just this, um, I drew a blank, with just the address right here. And did you get it? Good. You know, shorten these things. If you're going to put any kind of links or anything else like that, um, you know, learn how to use Bitly or Google or Tiny Euro and shorten your links if you have to put a link on the screen that's not going to be available later. And even better is don't show a blank screen. I don't know where the rest is. Hey, you may be in luck. Oh, we're seeing it. Ranger. We're seeing it. Oh, you are? Yeah. We see the um, okay. Facebook, the All right, thanks. Card. Yeah, okay, now I got it, thanks. I got a blank screen. <laughs> okay, so the best thing you can do, use QR codes. Um, all phones are coming standard with it now. The camera app that comes now with the new Android has it, so you don't even need to download an app anymore. And Apple has it built in. Uh, the other thing, when you're doing either a class or a presentation, you know, plan and organize. If you can see my walls, they're covered with post-it notes. Because I love to do this because you can change either the class order around. If something didn't work, I always save these. Because I say, oh, you know, I, I like how it was for this group, but it might have to be different for another group. And you can move these around. The other thing is don't bite off more than you can chew and try and teach or show too much information at once. And please, please, you know, we are teachers, and you would be amazed at how many teachers do not use spell check. So make sure that the, everything is correct. And um, there is spell check in PowerPoint. You just have to change the dictionary to English. But people don't do it. Um, know your timing, know how much time you have and what you have to get through, and know your material. You shouldn't have to read PowerPoint as a script. And we see this a lot. You know, don't look at your PowerPoint to decide what's next. You should know what's coming next. And this all comes out of practice. Um, I recommend my students used to do presentations all the time in class. And they learned right away what they needed to do was practice. And they would practice on each other. The nice thing about practicing on other people before you give any presentation or even a class is you get advice from other people. What did you think? What was good? What was bad? What could I improve? And nicest thing you can do, oh, say, almost this, yeah, it is the same shirt, no? Um, video yourself. Watch yourself. See how good or how bad you are. Uh, amazingly, we don't do this anymore. 
But above all, you know, show ideas and not slides. This is my obligatory quote. I look for something pithy. I couldn't find it, so I quoted myself. And, you know, the thing is we have some great presenters out there. We have some great presentations out there. But it's not often that we can get the two to mix, unfortunately. And by rethinking of what we're showing, whether it be to your class, whether it be to a business presentation, whether it be at IATEFL, um, I have given this talk at um, Belgium last year, and I got a message from somebody at IATEFL that they said, will you please give this talk to all the IATEFL speakers? So how many slides do you think I used here? Any guesses? And if you know, don't say. Were you counting? Is it showing the number? Who's cheating? <laughs> yes, I did it with 100. Very good, Karen. You win the prize. Karen, congratulations. You're going to get a free copy of this wonderful book, The Image. Okay? <laughs> good. So, you know, it's rethink, simplify, think about what they are seeing, and have fun. So, Again, if any questions, you can get a hold of me. I'm available for weddings, Christmas parties, anything. Um, have me there. Again, I want to thank Kieran, and I want to thank Magdalena's one, two, and three wasn't here. Uh, great thanks to Valeria. I know she just lost her Wi-Fi. I was talking to her on the phone. Um, wonderful job, you guys. Really, I appreciate you. did a great job representing the Visual Arts Circle. I want a special thank you to my, where is she? Oksana. Oksana for hosting and oh, moderating. Come on, she, come on, <laughs> she is my co-coordinator for the Aya Temple BSIG online team. And I won't say that she's definitely joining the Visual Arts Circle, but I'm trying to get her to. But um, thanks so much for doing this. And for the Queen, Heike, thank you so much for, you know, inviting us to do this, giving the Visual Arts Circle the opportunity. And as always, Wonderful. I can only echo these words, and uh, Kieran has already put it in writing again. One more time to all the people who presented. Um, this pres these presentations, the, the series of presentations, have been, I think, the classiest we've ever had. And no. I am a little bit disappointed that not more people have seen it. But what I will do. I'll make sure that these recordings go out everywhere because I think what you guys are doing is really breathtaking. It's not only beautiful, it, but it's like so, um, you know, it, it imprints on your mind. And I, I don't think I've ever cried during the virtual roundtable ever. And tonight I did. <laughs> I really had tears rolling on, over my eyes and that's how emotionally um, you managed to, to, to get this across, yeah? this message that visuals can touch hearts, they can be empathetic, they can move people, and, and this is what remains in your brain. Yeah? So I'm kudos, kudos to everything I've heard tonight. I was absolutely awestruck, and I, I had high hopes for this symposium, and it was well surpassed. So well surpassed. So thank you very, very much for this this amazing symposium. And I really make sure that these recordings go out there because what people have missed here tonight is just without words, without words. So thank you very, very yeah. much Rob, for organizing this. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the virtual roundtable. As always, it's great every year. I think this is my third year. Thing. 
But, and again, we appreciate the opportunity and we hope you all join us at the Visual Arts Circle and continue watching the rest of this wonderful weekend with Heike. And, uh, you know, uh, Kieran and me, we rehearsed yesterday a little bit and I go like, oh, perhaps I could be, could be part of the visual arts circle. And so Kieran goes like, oh, we welcome everybody. I said, Kieran, that's the wrong policy. You should be saying, we only accept very talented artists, but in your case, we do an exception. <laughs> that's how you should present yourself, because what you are there is a really exclusive club. And I congratulate you for this one. Kudos. Hats. <laughs> right. Well, thanks again, Heike. Thanks, Oksana. Right, uh, Mike. Aaron, Everyone. Thanks, everybody, for staying with us and watching. And big hugs, Oksana. Well done. Thank you, Heike. <laughs>